On today's episode, Drones by MacGyver. Ukraine converts light aircraft into missiles. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. In their war with Russia, Ukrainians are nothing if not resourceful. From reverse engineering old Soviet-era weapons to mass deployment of first-person view consumer drones as anti-tank weapons, the Ukrainians are backfilling their lack of modern battlefield weapons with some very clever improvisation. The latest is a dramatic drone attack on a Russian production facility in Tatarstan some 800 miles behind the lines. And what's more remarkable is that not only was this attack precise and long range, but the vehicle was a converted light sport aircraft with video showing it moving so slowly that I'm amazed that no one knocked it down with a rock. It appears to have been a modified Aeropract A-22 light sport aircraft, which are produced in Ukraine. So why convert an aircraft to such obviously limited performance? Well, there are several advantages from an engineering standpoint. The most obvious is that it's locally produced and it's cheap using conventional materials and off-the-shelf Rotax piston engines. The aircraft is also designed for short takeoff and landing, sacrificing speed for lift and critically, the aircraft has huge flapperons for plenty of roll authority, critical for terminal guidance as it approaches the target. Importantly, the control surfaces are mechanical and light sport aircraft typically are very light on the controls, making it relatively simple to automate flight control with pneumatic or electric linear and rotary actuators. The aircraft is designed to carry two adults, so it's reasonable to assume that it could carry three or four hundred pounds of explosives, assuming that the weight of flight control automation and guidance systems are offset by weight reduction in removing seats, restraints, and unnecessary instrumentation. In this application, it's likely very G-limited when heavily loaded, which is probably why the attack on the factory in Tatarstan was low, slow, and executed at a very shallow dive angle, which makes sense for an aircraft with a VNE, the maximum allowable speed, of only 120 knots. Now the manufacturer claims a plus four and minus two allowable maximum G loading, so future models with more sophisticated guidance systems might be able to execute a steeper, faster attack in the terminal phase. But an aircraft that has a flaps down stall speed of only 38 knots and a cruise speed below 100 will likely look much like a helicopter or a crop duster to Russian air defense systems, especially flying as low as it does. Now most anti-missile SAM systems are designed to track and attack targets that are high in speed, altitude, or both. Very little is known at this point about the modifications needed to pull off this conversion, and the airframe and its engine have been in mass production for some time. In its current form, this drone is obviously unsophisticated and should be very easy to shoot down, but even with those limitations, it now poses an interesting problem for Russian air defense. Its range is considerable, and the number of economically valuable targets in the Russian military manufacturing and energy infrastructure are considerable. The Russians simply can't protect them all, and if the Ukrainians can deploy these drones in numbers and launch them simultaneously, they might deliver more bang for the buck than the super sophisticated guided missiles like HIMARS. Necessity is the mother of invention, and if Ukrainians can do this much with so little, I look forward to see what they can improvise next. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.